morning, Salem Baptist Church. Let me hear you out there. Are you everybody awake? All right. Would y'all stand and sing with us? We're going to sing about the Word of God this morning. You join your voices. Lift them high to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords as we celebrate and worship this morning. Your Word is a lamp unto Oh, you know. 
Greet somebody this morning, tell them good morning, and the goodness of God looks good on you this morning.
seated. Well, good morning, church. It's always good to greet you from right here in the Baptistry Waters, uh, seeing uh, God just doing some miraculous things uh, in the lives of men and women and boys and girls, and, and looking forward to this morning uh, as we uh, just go through the waters of baptism once again. Uh, what a beautiful picture uh, that displays of a person that comes to faith in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I want to read a passage of scripture with you this morning. It's found in Matthew chapter 3. Listen to the word of God. Then Jesus arrived from Galilee at the Jordan, coming to John to be baptized by him. But John tried to prevent him, saying, I have need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it at this time, for in this way it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. And then he permitted him. After being baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove and lighted on him. And behold, a voice out of the heavens said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. This morning we have Chandler Yarbrough coming. You might be saying, well, that's your name, last name. Yes, this is my, this is my great nephew. Uh, and uh, Chandler is nine years of age. And, uh, and uh, so if you are a family member, we have, no, we have family members. I'm going to ask all the family members and those who know Chandler, influence Chandler, maybe a Sunday school teacher, uh, a trail life. Anybody stand up there? All right, Chandler, look at all of those. They're all here to support you, buddy. All right. Let me ask you a simple question. Who is the Lord and Savior of your life? Because your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and in obedience to his teachings is my privilege to baptize you, my little brother, in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, buried in a likeness to his death, yet raised to walk in the newness of life. Amen. I'm telling you, God's doing some great things in our children's ministries. Just seeing week after week, month after month, uh, boys and girls come to faith in the Lord Jesus. And I just pray today, may be the day of your salvation this morning. Pastor? Amen. What a blessing it is to see people of all ages be baptized. I was blessed this morning to give a copy of God's Word to a uh, Jewish man that has started attending our Keys Ferry campus. His mother, his father, both Jewish. He's been raised in a traditional Jewish home. Uh, he just married a lady that uh, is in the community, and one of our folks reached out to Tom having worked with him, and, and so I was able to give him a copy of God's Word today, and I put in there, may these pages lead you to our Messiah, uh, Jesus, and uh, pray for Tom, and we're trusting that God's going to bring him in as well. You know, we ought not be ashamed of the gospel of God, for it is the power of God unto the salvation to all who believe, first for the Jew and then for the Gentile. And so we celebrate today God's working. Paul said to the Philippians, I thank my God every time I remember you in all of my prayers for all of you. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ. If you're our guest this morning, we want to welcome you to Salem. Uh, we're not going to ask you to raise your hand or embarrass you by calling you out, but I do want to ask a favor of you. If you take one of those connect cards that's in the back of the pew in front of you and fill that out and drop it in the offering plate, probably won't have time to do that, so you can take it after the service to the welcome desk and we'll give you a gift there. Or if you don't want to do that, put it in one of the white receptacle boxes near the doors and we'll send you the gift. But after the service, if you're new, if you'll take that Connect card and just go to the desk, they'll give you a gift. Also, be sure that you got a bulletin this morning that the men are handing out, ladies at the doors. If you didn't get one, you can get one on the way out and you can read that and find out how to receive text 
from the church and emails and newsletters and things to keep you informed. But Salem is 154 years old uh, now, and we praise God that this church has had a ministry on this campus all those years, and there has always been room for one more, whatever it takes. Uh, this is a church that added Sunday school classes during the Great Depression. They added on to their building. And I would venture to say there were not many churches doing that during the 1930s. But this motto has always been, there's always got to be room for one more. And if that's you, we praise the Lord that you're with us today. I literally cannot believe it's time. I just put some Christmas trees up in the last two weeks, put them up, upstairs, not put them out. And uh, here it's time for Easter, March 31st, an early Easter this year, and we want to invite you to invite others to join you. Most people will respond to personal invitations to come to worship. And so in the four years, last week you took them all, we've replenished the racks, there are these little cards that say Easter and on the back an invitation to the Keys Ferry Campus and the 155 Campus for our Easter services. Take as many as you'd like and personally give this as an invitation to someone. If you'd like to take a yard sign uh, for your home or your business, uh, please do so if you have a good traffic flow in front of your house. If you're off on a gravel road three miles back and nobody comes down there but the postman, just give the postman one of these and let the sign go somewhere else. Now listen, be real careful about those signs. Don't just assume you can put it at your neighborhood entrance. You need to make sure you have permission, if it's not your property, to where you can put those signs because we don't want to do anything that's not appropriate. But listen, take those with you and use them. The other way to invite people and engage people is through social media. I don't think people realize how important it is. Uh, I have Facebook open here for you to hit these little emojis. Uh, I understand that that creates greater spread uh, for you to hit the like button and for you to hit the share button on your uh, post. And that will share the worship service invitations with other people. So we certainly invite you to do that often. Today, after this service in the choir room, which is directly behind the sanctuary, you can go out either of the doors and down the hall, there'll be a meeting with Dr. Cha-Cha and uh, some others about the Kenya mission trip that we'll be having this summer, uh, June 27th through July 7th. Uh, this is a mission trip we've been trying to put together for several years, but COVID came and slowed us down, and then uh, we had some unforeseen circumstances on the last one. So we're praying for a strong group of folks to go this year to a church that uh, Cha-Cha's father planted years ago where they already have a ministry planted and there's much work to be done. You've been a part of building a school there and helping that to grow, but we want to put some boots on the ground. And so if you would be open to considering that, uh, please join him, and if you can't make it today, we want to get you in touch with Kate or, or, or Dr. Cha-Cha and uh, let you all talk through it. Uh, my story, God's glory. Today at 3 o'clock, ladies and young ladies, there's the opportunity to come together to hear some ladies share what may be some of the most difficult stories of one's life. In fact, I've often said my greatest fear in life is losing one of my children. Our daughter has had three children that miscarried, but uh, today we're going to hear the stories of some amazing, wonderful Christian ladies who have had a child to die anywhere from young age all the way up through uh, their mid-50s. And so, uh, and that's the child that died. Uh, what a difficult thing to go through, but they want to sh share their story and how God was glorified in them and in the lives of others through those times. So that's going to be at 3 o'clock today at the 155 campus. Today our Honduras mission team is going to be sharing. In just a little while, Pastor Scott will initiate that, facilitate it, and then to Donnie and some others. And I look forward to hearing from them. But to also as we go towards our prayer time, I want to mention that Pastor Scott and Pastor Don will be leaving this Friday, March 15th, and be gone through the 23rd overseas 
We won't name the place they're going, but they're going to train a couple of hundred pastors. They're going to be preaching, going to be doing street ministry, small group meetings, and other things, and it'll be very fruitful, so pray for them as they're gone. Kim Bullard is having a heart ablation on March 15th at Piedmont Henry. We're going to continue to remember Alrika Britton's mother, Margie, who's in hospice care. Josh Anderson is in the hospital with a very severe UTI that has gotten into his bloodstream, and so he has uh, infection in his bloodstream, so pray that that clears. Very long update on Jimmy Cook on your online uh, prayer list that you received this morning. Continue to pray for Jimmy that he would uh, respond well to the treatment and the confusion would dissipate and that he'd be back to himself very soon. Uh, For Jerry Sermon's wife, Nancy, who has pancreatic cancer, and then Cade Raposa, who's our rec minister. His sister uh, had a baby this past week, Remington William Brockwell, who's been in the NICU and had some difficult days but is improving. So pray for Cade's family uh, during this time as well. Before we pray, I read that scripture about thank you for your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. As I listened to some of the testimonies this morning, what I want to remind you of, I had mentioned today that I had the blessing of officiating at my friend Dr. Joe DeCorpo's uh, funeral service yesterday. I've known Joe about 40 years. He had a love for uh, old police cars and ambulance restorations, and so I met him in a group called the Professional Car Club, and we became friends. We've talked about faith many times over the years, and then before he died, I had a good opportunity to make sure he was ready for eternity, and he was, but uh, my son Ben assisted me yesterday with that funeral. He has known Joe his whole life, so he sang and played the piano and shared a few words, but I thought about Ben, and I thought not just Miriam and me and our parents, But most all of you that have been here any season had an investment in sowing the gospel into Ben's life, to training him, to mentoring him. And so you really have been a partner with us in Ben's ministry from the first days. And then as Mackenzie and Avery and others came up here and talked today, uh, I was just sitting there thinking about all of you, how we've watched you grow from toddlers uh, and infants up to the young adults that you are, and I can't tell you how proud I am of all of you and your heart for the gospel that's genuine and real and authentic. And let me say this to you, any of you, that whether it was in the nursery, whether it was in the children's ministry, preschool ministry, student ministry, or in any way you've had an influence in these young adults' lives, you have been a partner on this mission trip. You've been a partner in their their missions ministry, and they're going forward. So let's remember today that it's not just those that go, but it's those that help to prepare those that go. Uh, And you'll hear more about that in the testimonies today. So listen, as Paul said, let's thank God for the partnership that we share in the gospel from the first day until now, and know this, that God's not completed his work in us. None of us are complete in Christ just yet. But we will be completed, we will be glorified at his appearing or when we see him. So he'll finish the work which he began, for he is faithful to do that. And so let us continue to partner together for the whole gospel and let it be taken from McDonough to the uttermost parts of the earth for his glory. Let's pray together today. Lord, as we come now to the time of taking up the morning offering, I pray that we would all be mindful that the first thing we need to give is ourselves. We need to give ourselves to the cause of the gospel afresh and anew every day. To surrender our lives to the lordship of Jesus Christ, to the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit that abides within us. Lord, and then we give of the material blessings that you have given to us and what we call the tithe and offerings. And we pray, Lord, that those tithes and offerings would be given out of the overflow of hearts of gratitude, not under compulsion, but that all would give generously and freely for the work of the gospel to go out to the world. We thank you, Lord, today for all whose names have been mentioned for prayer requests and for those that will come and share testimony of how you've worked in their lives. Lord, it gives me great joy, our staff great joy, 
and I know our church great joy to watch as these young adults especially share their stories and how you're working in their lives. And Lord, we pray that you would work mightily in them. Where you have worked some in our lives and used us, Lord, we pray that you would work even more mightily in their lives and use them more greatly than you've used us. Lord, we want the next generation to always be able to go beyond what we've been able to accomplish for the gospel. And that you, Lord, remind us today, you didn't need us, you chose us. And you have entrusted your gospel ministry to us, the ministry of reconciliation. And we must take that seriously because in doing so, we are Christ ambassadors as though you were making your appeal through us to the nations and to the neighborhoods in which we are part. So bless the offering that we're to take. Bless all those that will speak in this service. And for the privilege of being partners in the gospel, we are grateful. And with thanksgiving, in Jesus' name, amen. Let me mention one other quick thing. Kathleen Moss's funeral service will be 3 o'clock today at Cannon Cleveland Funeral Home. Uh, and uh, visitation begins one hour prior to the service. All right, fellas, thank you. It's always exciting for us when we can sing an anthem that's lyrics are based on Scripture. And that's what's happening for us this morning. If you have your Bibles, you can turn with us to Psalm 8. That is our text for Scripture and lyrics today. Please um, enjoy the anthem this morning, and may it bless your heart as it does ours.
There's a grace when the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in And when I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be alone Another
Uh, so good to have you all here with us today, and you're about to hear some stories from our team in Honduras. Back in the year 2000, I finally began to understand God's heart for the whole world, and I went on my first short-term mission trip 24 years ago, and this past February was trip number 71 for me. Next Friday begins 72, and in all of those trips, I have never gone with a group as large as what we took to Honduras, 26 people. And 18 of those were students. Is that incredible? And you're going to hear from some of them. What I'm really excited about, Donnie and Connie War really have taken on the leadership of this partnership that we have in Honduras. They have a passion for that area. And so Donnie is going to come and start us out and share some of the details of all that went on during that time. So Donnie, fill us in. Thank you, Pastor Scott. <clears throat> this has nothing to do with Honduras, what I'm getting ready to ask you. If I mentioned the name of Amani Jones, would any of you in here recognize that name? If you would, raise your hand. I see one hand. Amani graduated from Ola High School. She was a three-time state wrestling champ. And last night I found out that she is a national collegiate champ. I, uh, I was able to photograph her in many, in many wrestling events, and I saw her dissect her opponent. It didn't matter whether it was male or female. She was a, a theory of a wrestler. She did a great job. She was a true athlete. 250 Bibles, 200 food bags, aprons and hand towels. There were 25 of them that were handed out to the ladies in the, in the, uh, in the food kitchens where we went. Eight boxes of clothes. Curtis and I call it eight boxes of blessings. Those boxes are approximately 30 by 30 by 36. And when I tell you that they were packed full, they were packed full. The lady in Villarica leaves no space open. Jump ropes by the ladies' ministry here. Uh, oh, and I'll go back to the aprons. That was the ladies' ministry as well. The jump ropes, ladies' ministry. I cannot tell you how many, how many we handed out, but I can tell you right now, they were excitedly and aggressively put to use real quick. Those children over there thoroughly enjoyed them. <clears throat> the Bibles was from our life group, Curtis, uh, uh, Curtis Scott and Brother Jim's class. 
uh, the food bags, that was church. Four motorcycles. Let me say it again. Four motorcycles. The men's ministry had asked me, is there something that we can do for the men over there? And I said, well, let me find out. Discovered real quick that there were four pastors that needed transportation. Now I'm going to tell you this quick. One more time. And that's how fast God's coming back too. The first motorcycle was purchased. They raised enough money to buy the first motorcycle. We had the opportunity to present that motorcycle to that pastor while we were in Honduras. And let me tell you something. I've, like I shared it at, at Keys Ferry, I've heard people speak in tongues before. This pastor was speaking in his language, and he was speaking to God because he was thankful. Excuse me. He was thankful to get that motorcycle because of the distance he was walking every day. Uh, Brother Curtis and Brother Jim's class had taken up some extra money, coupled with another contribution, one contribution. We got the second motorcycle. And then right on the heels of that, right on the heels of that, the men's group provided two more motorcycles. And when I say motorcycles, it's a Genesis 200. It's an all-terrain bike, and it's 1750 U.S. dollars over there, and that includes the cost of a helmet. So that was provided. Sixty-one students in the kindergarten, 427 notebooks. 375 in the elementary school, 2,625 notebooks. 520 packages in the high school, or 520 students in the high school, 3,640 notebooks. Those were put in the packages that we provided, or that was provided, by the, by the uh, Good Samaritan Baptist Mission to the students. We simply packed them and presented them. And those numbers that I gave you did not include the pencils, the pens, the crayons, and things that students use. And that is for the year. That is their annual supplies for the year. So we just refer to them as blessings because when we go over there, we, we go over there, we work hard. We do have playtime. I'll be honest with you, we do. Uh, and these young people could come up, well, let's just say they're, they're very creative, okay? Uh, this was a big group. It was a great group. Thoroughly enjoyed them all being with them, no matter how young or how old they were. Uh, but at this time, I want to turn it over to, to Rachel and, 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 and her brother. <laughs> They're, they're going to come first and, and share. And this was, was this your first mission trip? Was this your first mission? It was their first mission trip. He spoke, oh, let me tell you about, let me, come, come here, come here, come here. When we were having our meetings and we said that our flight was going to leave at 535, the first thing out of his mouth, in the morning? <laughs> but the next thing is when we said, we've got to leave the church at 230. It was a bear of a growl, but he, but, but he was on time every, every time. Uh, don't know what kind of alarm clock he used, but he was on time every time. So anyway, I'll let you, let, let you, let you tell your story, buddy. All right, thank you. Good morning, church. Do you want me to go first? I'll go first. Do you want me to go first? Sure. All right, ladies first. Okay, so hi guys, my name is Rachel. This was my first mission trip, and for me, I just was very able to see God's love spread out the whole week. I think that was the biggest thing for me that I had. That was my impact of the week. And the first day, or the first, yeah, the first day we got there, we went to the elementary school, and that's where I saw the most love. You know, all those little kids, as soon as we got there, they were just hugging on you. Like, each and single one of them, they wanted to give a hug to you. Like, you cannot get by them without getting a hug from one of them. So that was, that was sweet to me. I like that. And um, we were playing with these two girls, me and Emma, because 
after they gave you the hugs, they're like, oh, come play with us, because the playground was right there, and they all just wanted to play. So we went and played with them on the playground, and... <laughs> <laughs> we were playing with them, and then we come back the next day, and they remembered our faces because it was when we were doing the big program for the elementary school, so everyone was there. Like, it was the whole elementary school, so it was packed. And they remembered me and Emma, and I feel these two little taps on me, and I turn around, and it's just two little kids, and they have, like, these drawings for us, and it was so cute. And they were just giving, they were very giving. They had a very giving spirit, and they just give us little things, like one of them gave me these rings and, like, candy, and they were just very giving. So you could see the hospitality of God in their hearts. So, And the next day, we had went to the senior center. And the lady that was running it, she was an older lady. But she told us that sometimes people forget that they need love, too. And that was very, like, that stuck with me throughout the week. Because the senior center was kind of, like, towards the back, it was behind the elementary school. So I can see how people would forget that it was there. And the lady, she was just very, she was a very loving lady. Like she was good at just spreading God's love and making sure that we are welcomed. Cause she was lifting up those chairs. She was making sure everyone had a chair and she was just this older lady. And it was like, wow, she was just trying her best to make sure we felt welcomed and, um, I was, before I went to Honduras, I was reading my Bible, and it was in Romans 8, and it said, it was Romans 8, 39, it says, no power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is related in Christ Jesus our Lord. So I was able to see that throughout the week, that was very, that was a verse that stuck with me, being able to see that no matter how far you go, you can travel, like, to the end of the world and God's love will still be there because his love is for everyone. It's not just for the people at McDonough, but it's for everyone of every nation. So I love that. And I love the worship because we were able to worship with them in Spanish. So while they're singing Spanish, we were singing in English. And that just reminded me that, you know, God's love. They remind me that God is very big. Like he's a big God. And sometimes we minimize him and think that, oh, he's just for these certain amount of people. But no, that's not true. He was, he was moving in under, so that was beautiful to see. Thank you. My name is Jacob. I'm a senior in high school at Union Grove. So you know, about to graduate soon. I'm excited. I'm tired of school. <laughs> Ready to go. <laughs> Ready to go. You know, we're gonna trust God through that process because you know God never fails. Um, but yeah, the things we did, we was packing school supplies for the clothes and clothes bags. And we had like a little symbi line going on, which was cool. Everybody did a little thing that led to a big thing. So it was great to see everybody working together, coming along for this one big goal. Um, and then we went to these villages and we was handing out food and the clothes bags that we had packed. Um, it, we had a little symbi line going on there too. I think. It was Miss Shannon, where it's like putting this slimy, greamy beans, beans things on these tortillas. And then someone did like this cream cheese thing, and I was just folding them. Um, <laughs> it's, it's hard to describe. It's hard to describe. <laughs> and then we had went to the elementary school, and we carried these red like Santa sacks, and they were like full of school supplies. It's like 80, 100 pounds. I'm like, I had to break my back trying to carry them. And I'm dragging it down the school hallway and the kids are just cheering me on, saying, hey, like, hola, like, hello, greeting me on. So, you know, it got me motivated that, you know, the pain's all right, it's for the kids. And then when we visited this one church, when we got there, the people of the church stood up and gave us their seats at their church. And I know I'm not doing that if someone comes here. Like, that's very, not, not in a bad way, but, like, that's very, very thankful and blessed that they would want to give up their seats for us. Show us how grateful and loving they are. And then <laughs> one thing that I connected most with is I play soccer all my life. I love soccer. I love the game of it. So being out there playing soccer with the kids, we both bonded and you know, connected through the game of soccer, you know, they're very good. They 
they beat us bad. It was, it was bad. But, you know, just sharing that love and connection for them. And, you know, the one thing we could say to each other is, like, Messi or Ronaldo. We all could get that little connection through there. Um, so when we was at the elementary school, it was time when we got to go out into the yard where we would play with the soccer kids. But when we walked out there, it's just a bunch of little kids that run up to you and hug you and, you know, greet you and just love on you. And, you know, it was amazing because they're small and I'm pretty tall. So they're just, like, hugging on my knee. You know, they're showing so much love. And it's really crazy to see that, you know, they're so appreciative of us being there for them. And, you know, when it was time for us to come back inside, um, thank you, McKinsey. She had brought, like, this big bag of braces. So I have, like, 15 to 20, you know, Jesus loves you Bible verses um, on my wrist. So I'm walking back inside, and a little girl asked me for one. So I had took one off, and I'm looking down, and I handed that back to her. And it's just more kids just asking for more braces, you know, one in, one of them wanted to give them to them. So it was cool to see like all the kids wanting to like receive bracelets with a small message on them. And then one thing that really was funny to me was like, my friend Caden, he was getting tickled by these little elementary school kids. And I'm like laughing at him like, ah, they got you. And then, you know, I turn around, they're all jumping on me too. So and it's like this cool picture of us just getting tickled by a bunch of elementary school kids, and I'm tickler, so it was like, okay, I'm done, but they kept going, so <laughs> they, that, was, that was pretty fun to see just, you know, being with the kids, loving on them. But the main thing I want to take that I took away from this trip and I want to share with you guys is that we should be more humble and that we are blessed and we have enough. <laughs> when I wake up, I have a brick house over my head shelter. I have AC for when it's hot, heat for when it's cold. We are blessed. When I wake up to go to school, I get to pick whatever outfit I want to wear. The Adidas, the Nike, whatever it is, we are blessed. When I have to, the kids there, some of them walk to school, I have a personal car I get to drive. And not even people in America can't say that. And that shows how much we are blessed. When I, you know, get breakfast, lunch, or dinner, I don't know what it is, but I know it's going to be food there at home. I know. There's just food available for me. And you know, the thing I was saying earlier, how they had the little slimy stuff, like we have options, like we have things to pick from. And even from the, the clothes, we get to pick to where the kids are wearing like our old PE sweated out t-shirts. And they're just so grateful and love, love it all that you know they're willing to wear whatever it is. And that it really like showed me that just seeing the beauty and life of it all, like driving down the street, like God's creation is beautiful. You know, we have a church here that has 11 people in it that wants to show the love of God, and we all come here together, and that's truly a blessing. And the church is there. They have no AC. Like, we're sitting in here, roof over our head, great production staff, everything from top to bottom here. It's just all a blessing. And it really calms my soul and, like, gave me, like, a new, like, perspective on life that, you know, the little things in life we need to take for granted. The things, you know, the little things that you don't realize, like you don't realize you miss something until it's gone. Like, you realize how much is needed then. And just seeing like how they are for the little things and then looking back at home, it's like, I have this and this and this, but yet I feel like I don't have enough. And the truth of the matter is we have enough. So I want to take or I would encourage you guys to go on this trip because the truth of the matter is I didn't want to go on this trip either at the start, but my friend Caden is a very great um, accountability partner. You should, I encourage you guys to have an accountability partner in your relationship with God to keep you in check, keep you in line, walk you down the great path because, you know, my mom brought it up to me. I'm like, eh. But when your best friend brings it up to you, it's like, okay. So, you know, he was like, serving God is great, and, you know, but serving God with your friend, your best friend, just it's like the cherry on top of it as well. So being there with the youth group was very loving to see, bring, having us be together, because you know, my time's tickling down, I'm going to college soon. So being there with the group, having more time with them was good, and serving God on top of that was just amazing. So I encourage you, it was my first trip, so I encourage you guys to go there, because like Donnie would tell us a lot, you don't know till you're there. You don't know till you're there, it's, it's not, 
you see it online, but until you see it with your eyes and experience it firsthand, it's a truly different story. So thank you guys and thank you everyone for letting me be on this trail. The slime was overcooked black beans, Jacob. <laughs> Good morning, my name is Shannon Garman. Um, and I had the honor of serving on this trip this year for my second time. I was able to take both of my children, Abby and Jacob. It was Abby's second trip as well, Jacob's first trip. Um, they're both serving in other areas this morning, but um, I'll never forget towards the end of the week when Connie asked Jacob what he thought about a mission trip, and before she could get the sentence or the question out of her, out of her mouth, he said, I love it, I'll be back next year. It's very rewarding for me as a mom to hear my child say that. Um, I also want to commend the youth. So before this trip, I'll admit I was a little bit anxious. We were outnumbered, the adults. Um, we had more youth going on this trip uh, than we had had in previous years, and they did a phenomenal job. So when we teach the Great Commission, and when we talk about going out and telling all the world about Jesus, these kids are listening. They're listening, and they're doing a great job. So phenomenal work, guys. Thank you. It was, a, it was an honor to serve with you. Um, some of the highlights on the trip for me, um, of course, we got to see our sponsored child um, and spend some very valuable time loving on her, um, and that's always a great blessing. Um, every year we do things a little bit different. So this year we went to some different villages. Um, one of the first days we were in a village and we actually got to go to a church plant. So it was a church that's just being started. Um, and in the congregation was a gentleman who was the primary provider for his family and he had been in an accident recently and found himself in a wheelchair and unable to work. And it was really encouraging for me to see our team, some of our team members pray over this man. Um, he had recently come to know Jesus and it was just a very moving experience. Um, and another new thing that we did this year, we spent a lot of time at the school. You heard a lot about the school supplies and the kids are beyond grateful for the basics that we don't, we don't even give a second thought to. But um, another new thing we did was we went to the elderly feeding center that is on the same city block as the school. And um, it was just a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. We were able to um, worship with these folks. It's a day program. There's 60 spots. And the room was full. Um, we were able to sing in both languages. We were able to um, worship with them. And that was very, just very moving. Um, and we were able to go to the feeding center after that and feed them. If you know me at all, you know food is my love language. If I care about you at all, I'm going to feed you. Um, and so we were able to feed them and just talk with them and be grateful. And, and, you know, one thing that I think the experts say that play is international, right? I think love is international because I can't speak Spanish. I couldn't communicate with these people, but the looks, the hugs, um, the moments that you share with them, it's heart changing. It's so fulfilling. Um, and I wish everybody had an opportunity to do that. Um, I was sitting where you were a couple of years ago on that pew, and I was hearing the stories from the first mission team that was able to go. And God started working in my heart. So that little tug you're feeling right now on your heartstrings, listen to it. Listen to it, because he's telling you to go. He's telling you to support it. He's telling you to pray for Honduras and pray for these people. And so just hear his calling. Um, there are a lot of ways that you can help us. I want to encourage you to do that. Go. If you can go, go. And like I said, I was there and I process everything, right? So I was feeling the urge, wanting to go. But, you know, my mind's, I can't get off work and it's going to cost money. And what about the kids and the dogs and the husband? And put it all down. He'll make a way for you. He will make a way for you to go, and you will never, ever be the same. And um, so I just encourage you to do that. If you can't go, pray. Pray over us. 
the only way we got through when we had such a successful trip was because we felt your prayers each and every day. We had no travel issues. Nobody got sick. Nobody got hurt. Um, it was just a phenomenal trip all the way around, and it's only because of you praying for us. Um, and then throughout the year, we're going to have a lot of fundraisers um, and things that you can do to help us. So if you're unable to go, support us. Support us financially. Buy a, a Boston butt or um, come to the potato bar. Amy and I actually um, came up with a little project that we're going to do, and she's going to speak more about that when she talks. But we want to be able to take a 1,000 personal hygiene bags with us next year. And that's a lofty goal. That's a lofty goal, but I know that we can do it. That's one of the most valuable things that we were giving out um, in Honduras were things like toothbrushes and toothpaste. Um, and if we could put like a disposable razor, maybe a bar of soap, we're going to start putting some lists and some advertising around the church in ways that you can help us put those personal hygiene bags together. But when you go to the dentist um, and, you know, they give you the toothbrush and the toothpaste, just throw it in a Ziploc bag for us. Um, that'll be an incredible help. It's a lofty goal, but I know that we can do it. Um, with all of you behind us. And so we're up here talking to you today as a mission team, but you all are extensions of our mission team, and we couldn't do any of this without you. So I thank you in advance for all of your support and for all of your prayers. Good morning. I'm Amy Steele. Avery went with me, but she's upstairs with the youth, so, or students. Last year when I spoke, mine, is, mine and Shannon's story is very similar in that two years ago, I was so moved by what I heard that I wanted to go. And last year when I spoke, I was overcome with emotion about how I felt there because I'd never experienced anything like that in my spiritual walk. And it was... I was just blown away by the people of Honduras and how grateful they were for so little. Um, and my message was to go. Um, and that's still my message. Go if you can. Um, and, um, but each night, the, the thing that we, we kind of ended our night every night by uh, sitting in a big circle big circle, 26 of us, and sharing. Most nights it was high lows. What was your high of the day? What was your low of the day? And your, the low usually was um, never a selfish thing. It was usually like what I saw, it, that was my low, or some things. Um, but the last night, Donnie and I decided we were going to kind of switch it up a little bit. And instead of doing high lows that last night, we came up with two questions. And one of the questions was, what was your favorite moment of the week when we worked together as a team? Like what, I hate to say like teamwork activity, but basically what was the, what was the moment when we, you felt a part of a team? And everything from um, packing the school bat supplies to passing out the school supplies to carry in food bags to um, the ones who, not me, the ones who practiced and sang and played the guitar for us, you know, preparing for that worship, um, sorting clothes, because uh, I know Donnie said we took these big boxes, but they were like this big, and they were full of clothes, and they were sorted. I mean, kids were jumping in, sorting, you know, male, female, toddler, all the way up. And so we were able to then take those eight boxes, have them organized where we could take them to the villages, let the pastors pass them out. And so, so many things that were mentioned. But as we were going around the circle, um, I, I'd already had my turn. And I looked across the circle and Luke Sleeper was um, untangling one of the jump ropes and rebraiding it because it had gotten messed up because it was used a lot that week by the kids that as they came to the mission. And it struck me at that moment that our team was way more than those 26 people sitting in this circle. And so I, I took a second turn to say to everyone, 
Like, our team reaches so beyond the people who are sitting here. And I, I know, you, you know, we probably should have compared notes a little bit, but repetition is a good thing. So some of the things, you know, uh, the Sunday school class that, that purchased Bibles that we were able to pass out, um, the potato bar where, you know, for, for some of you it was just, I don't have to cook today, but for us it was food bags that we were able to distribute and um, this this $10 food bag was rice, beans, cornmeal, um, a little bit of sugar, coffee, um, and it was enough food for their family for over a week, $10. Um, and so we were able to pass those out. The jump ropes, the little small crosses, the dish rags that the, all of those the women's ministry made, the men's ministry with the motorcycles, um, that moment when they brought that man, that pastor, to the mission. The, the motorcycle was parked all fancy with the helmet ready for him, and he had no idea why he was even asked to come to, to the mission that night. And he was surprised with that motorcycle, and when he then began to share his testimony of jail and drugs and all of these things, and then Jesus just took him and transformed his life, and he's now a pastor, and he was walking two hours each way to go preach. Like, who does that? Somebody called by God does that. Um, he was so grateful, and I can't wait for the others to receive theirs as well. Um, so... Many of you helped the youth to get there through your donations. So just like last year, I encourage you to go. But if you cannot go, know that you are a part of our team in all the different ways that you can help us. Um, so I leave you with this. Each of you should use 1 Peter 4.10. I'm sorry. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. And yes, Shannon and I do have a lofty goal for next year to take a thousand um, hygiene bags, but we, I think we only had a hundred this time. And that was, that was a moment where I was feeling very attacked because there were all these hands and all these little fingers in because they wanted a toothbrush so badly. Um, and we decided that that was going to be something that we were going to really work towards for next year is to be able to have that. So thank you so much. Morning, everyone. My name is Haley Moore. Um, this was my first mission trip, my first time to Honduras, my first time out of the country. So a lot of firsts for me, and it was really exciting. Um, so I just want to share a little bit about what impacted me the most um, during my time in Honduras. Um, we would travel to these plant churches and um, have service with them. And it's not like a service here, it's like 10 minutes in, out, like scripture, song, God bless you, goodbye. And um, I was like, whoa. <laughs> um, so um, one of the things that stood out to me was um, the first little church that we went to, there were two ladies that came up to the front and sang us a song. And they weren't worried about who was singing soprano, who was singing alto. It was more of like a, a, a cry to the Lord. Like it was, a, it, was a, it was a shout, it was a scream. And um, to, the, to the ear, it's like, you know, it's not really pleasing to, the, to our ears, but it's pleasing to God's ears. And that moment, it really broke down what worship is. Like, it, it broke it down to its bare bones, and I'm like, that's worship. You know, we get up here, and, and it's, it's all about, um, you know, it, it's not all about, but it seems more of like a production um, in America sometimes when, when we get um, too caught up in the details of, you know, sound check and who's singing this part, who's singing this part. Um, and it really brought worship to my mind, like, this is, what are we doing this for? Um, and this, this is for God. So I got to share a little bit of my testimony while I was there. And, um, I've always had the heart for worship. 
Um, I can remember sitting in the Rock House listening, and at the time it was Ryan and Megan Garrett that were in there, and I just remember looking at Megan Garrett like, wow, that girl can sing, and I wish I could get up there and do that, but I could, and I, I just never took that step, so I shared my testimony with the people in Honduras. I'm like, if you have that, that fire in your heart, um, whether it's um, worship or through prayer or nurturing, if you serve in the preschool or wherever, but if you have that desire and you know that you could be plugged in, do it. Like, don't worry about what other people think, how other people are going to think that you sound, because ultimately, it don't matter what other people think. It's, it's about what God thinks. So I'm really glad that I got this opportunity to go to Honduras because it was a heart check. Uh, why, why am I here? Why am I doing this? And I want to bring that back here and implement that everywhere I go. Why am I here? Why am I doing this? And it is to love others as Christ has, has loved. And um, I want to keep, keep remembering that um, as I continue to worship um, so thank you guys for listening, and I encourage you to, again, you, whether it's going to Honduras, um, but we, we got a lot of work to do here as well. Um, I, see, I see a lot of lack of love here, and I think we need to start here and then, and then go out. Um, yep, so thank you. Hi, oh, wow. <laughs> Hi, my name is Emma. Um, I'm 17 years old and I go to Union Grove. And this was my first opportunity to go on a mission trip. And I was sort of going into it just feeling nervous because I've heard a lot of people talk about it and just be like, oh, my heart's in the village, my heart's in the schools. And I just didn't know I was going to feel that sort of love. And the second, when I tell you, like, the second we stepped foot into the elementary school, I just felt so much love. It, not even just walking outside. Like, walking outside, they were bombarding you with hugs, but even just walking through, like, the hallways, the little kids would see you from their classrooms, and they start, like, freaking out, and they're waving, and they, you know, some of them ran out and gave you a hug, and I just felt so much love in that moment. And they just wanted to love on you, and they would literally spend their, like, last little bit of money to, like, buy you a snack or, like, give you a bracelet or just some sort of way to show that they love you, and like even though it's not necessary, it was just so sweet just seeing that. Um, and I also got the opportunity to share a little bit of my testimony at one of the churches we went to on Wednesday, and um, there was a lady that was standing there translating for me, and even though I don't speak the same language as these people, my words were, like I could just see how they were influencing these people, and like my words had a really, really big impact on them and like I could just see it on their faces and like they're smiling saying amen and all this stuff and it was just really cool to see that like even though we speak two different languages, we were all, you know, we all still love the same God and my words still had an impact on them. Um, so I shared a verse which is John 16, which says, I have said these things to you that in may, you may have peace, but in the world you have tribulation, but take heart because I have overcome the world. And what I really took from that was that, like, even though life will throw, like, tons of challenges at you, you know, God will get you through it. Donnie, we, you, like, said to me a couple of times, you know, if God takes you to it, he will take you through it. And I just kind of take that as a sign to just not be afraid to get up here and say something or talk to some stranger at the grocery store because I'm not super comfortable with this. Like, I sing on stage. I sing at rock. But, like, it's just different getting up there and being silent and everyone's staring at you. But if God has led you to come up, stay, come up on the stage and share something or talk to some stranger somewhere, like, just do it because that's the only way we're going to get his word and his gospel out and grow his kingdom is if we're willing to share. So my moral of the story is just don't be afraid to get up and share his love because God loves you and he put you on this earth for a reason and that was to grow his kingdom. So thank you. But God, two powerful words there, but God. Some people struggle to get the finances to go this year, but God. Some people had to pay a lot of money to go this year, but God. I'm often reminded by my spouse 
when I say, I wish I hadn't retired early, I wish I hadn't done this, I wish I hadn't done that, Donnie, wasn't God's plan. Always takes me back to Jeremiah 29 and 11, for I know I have a plan for you. It wasn't by chance that I made my first trip there in January of 2017. It wasn't by chance that God moved me from the church I was at this time, at that time to this church because we started in 2022, 2023, now 2024, and guess what? February 15th through the 22nd of 2025, we're going back. That's during winter break for the kids here in Henry County, and we would love to have you go. Uh, it cost us this year $1,450 per person. That's airfare, room and board, and food. And let me tell you, Gina and Mercedes can put some groceries on the table. Uh, now it's, and, and that's a lot of southern food. I mean, fried, fried chicken, fried pork chop. If you got any fried, fried, fried food problems, well, I'm sorry. But it is, it is good food. Now, when I get back, it takes me a couple of weeks to get back into the habit of eating rice and beans. But it is good food, and they take care of us. But thank you for the opportunity to let us share with you. If you would like to entertain the thought of going with us, uh, let us know, uh, and, and we'll be glad to give you all the information. Uh, and, and again, as, as several have said, it, and Pastor, Pastor Rick said, it's not that you can sponsor us by, by going, but by doing different things for us to go. It's, and, and, and as others have mentioned also, there's going to be a, going to be a lot of, a lot of uh, fundraisers. And it's not to necessarily help pay for someone's trip there, although we were able to help some this year. Uh, it's, to, it's to help with, with some of the projects that we have. There is uh, three projects that's on my mind I'll just share with you real quick, and then I'll, I'll close. I know we're running over. Uh, the, the church plant, $10,000 for a church lot. $10,000 for, for new chairs in the elementary school auditorium, and $7,000 to have the, have the playground turfed, AstroTurf put on it. They took the soccer field, and they had that done. Another church took care of that. That was a, that was a good expense. That was $16,000, and the first time I saw it was, uh, was back in July, and it's absolutely beautiful, and, and the, but these kids are still playing and swinging and running. Uh, the, 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 the little kids are on, on dirt and rock. And so that's three projects that's on my heart, uh, and, and I, don't know, I don't know where we'll go with it, but nevertheless, that's three projects that I saw that God has really put strongly on my heart. But uh, again, let us know for additional information. We will pass it along to you, and we would love to have you go because it was said, you won't know until you go. Pastor Scott. I just hope it was a great blessing for you to hear all these people share their stories. And I am so proud of them for reaching out and serving, especially the younger ones as they get started along the way. And as we look forward, we want to continue to be a mission-focused church. And there will be many opportunities to be involved. Please keep prayer as a priority. Remember that today is the first day of Ramadan. Muslims around the world are praying and fasting, and they are believing in something that is not the truth. And during these times, God will often reveal himself in powerful ways to Muslims around the world. Sometimes it's through dreams and visions that he speaks to them because nobody has gone to them yet to tell the story. So be praying that many, many Muslims around the world will hear the best news about Jesus Christ. And keep in mind upcoming mission opportunities. Right after this service, back here in the choir room, Dr. Cha-Cha, as well as Cade Raposa, will be back there to answer any questions about the upcoming mission trip to Kenya. And that will be at the end of June through the first part of July. If you'd like to just find out some more info, by going, you're not saying I'm definitely going to be a part of the team. But you might want to find out some more details, and it'll be right back here. And please be praying that God will raise up that team to go. So we want to go into the conclusion of our service here today for our invitation. If God is leading any of you today to make a decision public during this time, we would love to invite you to come. Maybe God's inviting you to be a part of the Salem Mission Church here. And if he's leading you to become a part of the family, 
we would love that as we grow together, as we move forward together. Feel free to come during this time and we would receive you. We're excited about that. Many mission opportunities on the horizon for all of us to be involved in. So let's all stand together in this time. And the good news is that Haley's going to take my mic so I won't be singing. You will rejoice in this time, okay? If God's leading you, please come during this time. Come stand with me. This is Lloyd Kelly. Lloyd uh, is uh, related to Debbie Kelly's uh, deceased husband that passed about 16 years ago. And uh, he has uh, been at Salem now for some time. And we met this week, and he just wants to officially uh, transfer his letter from First Baptist Tucker to Salem and di dive in uh, with all he's got. Uh, he lost his wife uh, just a few years ago. And uh, so if uh, you welcome him joyfully into the fellowship, just raise your hand and say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to ask Lloyd just to stay down here at the end of the service for a minute, and you come by and greet him. And we're going to get his picture. Don, how about come do that right now? Listen, I want to tell you something. Um, when we hired Scott, we had Gabe Walker do global missions. Pastor Scott came to do it. The vision is that we... Uh, not be having a trip here, a trip there, but that somehow through the year we start getting a large percentage of the people that make up Salem on some kind of specific mission trip, whether it's local, regional, or national. Now, I know it takes time, but I'm getting old, and we need to pick up the pace, okay? So that means what they're saying and sharing is you've got to start praying about how you're going to be involved. I mean, I'm sitting back there today, and what an amazing congregation we have. What a blessed congregation. We're a wealthy congregation, and you say, well, I'm not wealthy. I'm not saying we have a bunch of wealthy people here. I'm saying we are together a wealthy congregation through which God always accomplishes what he wants to. And uh, Doc uh, Cha-Cha, come down here with Pauline for just a minute, please. Um, we've been trying at this Kenyan thing. I'm going to tell you something. God brought Cha-Cha and Pauline to us, and I knew it from the first day, and then when we, but they didn't push themselves in. Some people run through the door, have something that they want to fund, and they just, you know, push, push, push. No, they came in. Their boys were really the prompters of that, them being here. Uh, and so Cha-Cha uh, is now my personal physician, as well as my fellow minister in the Lord, and he has helped my health immensely. And I want to say to you again, if you don't have a general practitioner, I would suggest strongly that you transfer your records to Cha-Cha. Now, again, don't ask him medical questions at church. He's like you. He wants to come, come to church. Give him a break. But I'm telling you, he's a phenomenal doctor. Pauline is a nurse. Uh, they are two godly people. And if you've ever been to their home, if you know their story, it's just evident. Their heart labors in Kenya. And Chacha, I hadn't told you this yet, but I've, I've, I'm sensing, and you and I can talk about it, but I think my physical body's getting close to the point that I think I may want to go to Kenya with you this year. Mm -hmm. If, uh, you know, I've had a rough few years here, folks, and uh, so I'm going to talk with him as my physician and as my brother that knows the area, 
And, and I feel like God's prompting me to go to Kenya with Cha Cha and uh, put my feet on the ground there. And I, I need some of the rest of y'all to commit to do this as well. Uh, you don't have to commit today. I can't stay because I've got to go do a funeral. But if you can stay for just a few minutes, or at least go back there and introduce yourself to Cha Cha, put your name down. He can talk to you later if you can't stay for the meeting. But to, we need to get more people on the ground. And I don't know why the devil's uh, put a little wall up in front of us the last few years about this, but we need to ask the Lord to kick the wall down, okay? So just pray, kick the wall down, Lord. He tears walls down. He doesn't build walls up. And so uh, we want to see a strong uh, ministry presence there. And you've already done an amazing amount of ministry there through finances and gifts. And, you know, in the time, maybe that's what we do there. But uh, I want you to come to the meeting if you can. Um, and Cha-Cha, we're thinking what age do they need to be to go down there? Uh, I think any age from uh, 16. 16 up. And, uh, up. Let's say adults. Okay. But if you are a young adult, you will feel free. And you have somebody who can organize how you can have somebody take care of you. That okay. All right. And the parents are okay. Okay. Let's pray together before we go, okay? Uh, Lord, you entrusted your mission, the Great Commission, to the disciples 2,000 years ago on what I believe to have been Mount Arbel. They could see all across the Sea of Galilee. They could see the Gentile side, the Jewish side. They could see that which represented the world. And Lord, we pray that uh, you would help us to do more and more as it relates to missions. As Scott uh, spoke of Ramadan beginning, uh, and now we're going to have a a Muslim temple across the street from us. Uh, we have right here in our own backyard what it used to be you had to go across the world to encounter. And so we pray that our missions ministry would be fervent right here at home. As Haley said a minute ago, that our love would ever be increasing for our neighbors, for our families, for our own fellowship and our community, but also for the nations. And Lord, I see it over and over again. When somebody goes on a mission trip somewhere else, they often come back with the realization they need to be more on mission where they're planted. And so help us there. Lord, if there are any other people that are sensing, feeling that possibly you're calling them to go to Kenya, I pray they would step out by faith today and at least go to this meeting or connect with Cha Cha or Cade and hear about what opportunities, especially medical personnel, doctors, uh, maybe even dentists, uh, nurses, hygienists, I'm not sure what all, but uh, Lord, if this is going to be some medical involvement, I know for sure, as well as sports ministry and others. So help us to develop this and, and be there as well as other places. Lord, one of our brothers that's online with us is already asking for us to come to his village in India and to be a part of uh, what you're doing there. And we pray in time that that might begin to be able to happen. So bless us that we may be a blessing to many, and that you may be praised through all of it. Thank you for all that are here today. God, thank you for how you're moving in the life of one church in two locations, and we just pray that we would be mindful to him who much is given, to them whom much is given, much is required, and we pray in Jesus' name with thanksgiving. Y'all come by and meet Lloyd if you hadn't done so already. He'll be right down here. All right.